So today, I wanted to delve into a very important concept called MES, which stands for Minimum Efficient Scale. The MES is just a really fancy way of saying that you are operating at the lowest point on your AC curve. And if you think about it, if you're operating at the lowest point on your AC curve, you have fully tapped into all of the economies of scale that exist in your industry. Now, let's just make sure that you are all understanding of what economies of scale are and examples of economies of scale, so that it'll be easier to comprehend this concept. Economies of scale is essentially the idea that as a firm grows in size, and they produce more output, their average cost decreases. Now, how does that happen? Let me compare two examples. And let's start off with a news agent. Imagine a news agent goes up to a farm and they say to them, we would like to buy, I don't know, 100 bananas off you. The farm quotes them a price of, let's say, 80p per banana. Tesco now go to the exact same farm and they say, we will buy 1 million bananas off you. Will Tesco be given a higher or lower price than the news agents? Well, of course, it will be lower per unit. Overall, of course, Tesco will pay more because the farm wants to entice you to buy in bulk if you buy huge quantities they might offer you a price of, let's say, 20p. Now, I can actually show this on a diagram. So ignore my two diagrams that I've drawn already. We'll use those in a second. If I draw a very quick AC curve over here like this, yeah? What I described, if you think about it, is the idea that when Tesco buy, they buy at this quantity over here, this quantity Q1. So they operate really low down on the AC curve, where their cost per unit, in our example, was equal to 20p. Whereas the news agent, they were only able to buy a very small amount of, of bananas, so they were operating somewhere over here at Q2. So their cost is all the way up there. C2, which in our, again, made up example was, I think I said ATP. Yeah? The advantages that big firms therefore have is that as they grow in size, they can negotiate lower prices by buying in bulk. That is called purchasing economies of scale. There are other economies of scale, like financial economies of scale. So imagine, for example, if Tesco go to the bank to take out a loan, they're not only going to get given a bigger loan, the interest on the loan that Tesco will get is a lot lower because they're a lot safer for the bank to give the loan to compared to the news agent who will get a smaller loan at a higher interest. Again, the average cost is therefore lower for Tesco compared to the news agent. Right. Now that we've done a recap of what economies of scale are, hopefully that's really clear. What I now want to do is this. I want to go, all right, so the MES is a fancy way of saying the lowest amount of output that is required for a firm to be able to fully tap into its economies of scale and get to the lowest point on its AC curve. In other words, no matter how much more you buy in bulk, the farm will not be able to give you a lower price. And I've drawn you guys two AC curves, and I want us to work out together. One of these AC curves is for a hairdresser, and one of them is for a supermarket. Which is which? It's a good idea to pause the video at this stage and attempt it yourself. The correct answer is that this AC curve on the left-hand side is Tesco or a supermarket. Whereas the one over here is a hairdresser. And let me explain why that makes a lot of sense. If I compare the two, do you guys agree that it completely makes sense for Tesco to bulk buy 1 million or millions of bottles of shampoo? And it does not make sense for a hairdresser to do so. And I'll walk through why. There are three reasons why it makes sense that Tesco could bulk buy a million bottles of shampoo. Firstly, do you guys agree that Tesco can distribute those bottles across all their stores nationwide? That's number one. Number two is, do you guys agree that Tesco have massive warehouses where they can stockpile their shampoo bottles? They don't need to all be on the shop floor. And thirdly, Tesco will get through bottles of shampoo far more quickly than a hairdresser. And the logic of why is think about your experience of buying shampoo from Tesco. When you're in Tesco and you're buying a shampoo bottle, either you buy the entire bottle or you just don't buy it at all. You haven't got the option of squeezing out what you need for the week, having a little wash while you get your groceries. You either buy the bottle or you don't buy the bottle. There's no in between. Where's a hairdresser? Okay, let's say we own a hairdressing salon together. And we, we just, for some reason, we've lost our minds. We've gone crazy. We decided to bulk buy a million bottles of shampoo. We think, yeah, that's a good idea. Number one, will a million bottles of shampoo fit in our little kind of salon? Obviously not. Therefore, what do we now need to incur? We now need to start paying for storage costs. We have to basically pay for like a warehouse to put all these extra bottles in. That's number one. Number two, did you guys know that shampoo bottles expire? Next time you have a shower, look at the back. It's not about two, three years. Do you think we will get through one million bottles of shampoo in three years? The answer is so definitively no, by the way. Think about if you're going to get your hair washed in the hair salon, are they going to use an entire bottle of shampoo on your hair? How insulting would that be? Like, ah, oh, you need to wash. Yeah, of course not, right? They won't even use more than like 
five percent of the bowl, maybe ten percent, if we're being like really kind of exaggerating, right? In other words, the vast majority of these bottles that we just bought in bulk are going to expire. What are we doing? Why are we buying a million bottles of shampoo? It does not make sense. And rather than experiencing economies of scale, by the way, we are experiencing this economies of scale. We've basically done something so silly because now we've incurred all these extra costs for no reason whatsoever. The point then is this. The point is, is that if you want to compete with Tesco and be able to offer prices similar to Tesco, you need to be able to bulk buy like Tesco. Do you think it's cheap to be able to bulk buy a million bottles of shampoo? The cost per unit is really low, but the overall cost is really, really high. In other words, in order for a firm to be able to enter the supermarket industry, they would need to tap into such vast economies of scale to reach the MES, so the barriers to entry are way higher into the supermarket industry. If we want to enter the hairdressing industry, how many bottles, bottles of shampoo do you reckon the hairdressers bulk by? 20, 30? We could do that today. The cost involved is not significant. We can go to Costco, I'll, I'll buy it, it's on me, yeah? I will bulk by 20 bottles of shampoo on our behalf, and therefore now our cost is just as low as it is for the other hair salons. They cannot therefore have a major cost advantage compared to us, hence the barriers to entry into the hairdressing industry are a lot lower than they are in the supermarket industry. This is why MES is a powerful concept, because in industries where it requires a lot of output to reach the MES, it means it requires a lot of financial muscle. You want to compete with the existing car manufacturing firms? You need to be able to bulk by steel like Toyota can. Do you have that kind of money? I don't know about you guys. I definitely don't have that kind of money. Therefore, the barriers to entry into the car industry, the supermarket industry, and other oligopolies like that are very, very high, because how are you going to bulk by like they bulk by? Does that make sense? That is why the MES is really powerful. And the way you could use that in an exam, if I take you guys through an exam question. So if we look at January 2013, question number 10, D. Yeah, so here you are. Assess the reason why a few large firms dominate the food retailing industry. They meant supermarkets, by the way, but not the hairdressing industry. That's one of your analyses. A reason why some firms are big and why some firms are small is that certain industries, the barriers to entry are so high because reaching the MES requires huge amounts of output, huge amounts of financial muscle. Whereas hairdressing, it's very easy to tap into the economies of scale. Very little output is required to tap into the economies of scale. Very little money is required to tap into the economies of scale. The barriers to entry are therefore low. And that is why there are loads and loads of hairdressers, but only a handful of supermarkets. Hopefully, that was really, really clear.